Today we're going to speak about time management. Either you control your time or your time controls you. And we're going to talk about a system that's called PIN, P-I-N management. So here we go. The reality of time management is what you say you're going to do, you actually do. And time is a bit of a paradox. You, you never seem to have enough time but you have all the time there actually is. So going back 34 years, my time management journey started with a little booklet called a day runner and you used to write all your appointments in it. And I found out very quickly that some things were recurring, in this case prospecting. So I'd have to rewrite prospecting every day, certain times, you know, nine o'clock to 12 o'clock, one hour break, then one o'clock till four o'clock. So every day I'm starting to write, I thought that's a little tedious. So suddenly that little time runner got too small. So then I went to a eight and a half by 11 or an A4 size booklet, and that was my daytime. And much better, but I still found myself having to write things over and over. Remember, this is back in the late 80s or mid to late 80s. So from that system, I thought, well, if I'm doing certain recurring things, why don't I, I photocopy the sheet? So I started photocopying, and I thought, well, why don't I just have an overlay that I could put on every day as to what I was going to do that day. The standard appointments that never seemed to change, like when I was going to work out, when I was going to have lunch, when I was going to prospect. So I developed a, a clear overlay that I would put on every day and that's what my day looked like unless I had appointments. And that actually turned into something that I actually coined in the late 80s, well probably, yeah, probably late 80s, called My Perfect Day. And My Perfect Day was a system of organization that, a bit of a misnomer, if I had no appointments, what would my day look like? What time would I start? What time would I eat breakfast? What time would I do, do my, my follow-up calls? What time would I do my busy work? What time would I do my prospecting? What time would I have lunch? Then after lunch, what time would I do all my busy stuff? What time would I do my prospecting? So my day was organized in such a way that I had a perfect day schedule for when I did not have appointments. And that overlaid every day. Now as time went on, obviously, Electronics came into four in maybe the early 90s and everything went eventually to a mobile phone which we have today So my whole schedule is in my mobile and obviously in Outlook also which is the, um, the system I use now So what I started discovering about time management was was time management is not an organizational problem per se It's a motivation problem if you're not managing your time if you're not controlling your time it's it's not an organizational problem it's a motivational problem because when you go on vacation or when you book a vacation, what happens the week before that vacation in real estate? You get super, super busy. And do you get everything done in that week? Yes, you do. Why? You didn't suddenly become more organized, you suddenly became more motivated. So start to think of time management as not an issue of organization, but of an issue as motivation. So how do I find the motivation to stay time managed and organized to reach the goals that I want to meet. Well, then that gets into goal setting, which I'm not going to get into today. I just want you to get today that time management is not an organizational problem. It is a motivational issue. So the reality of the whole thing is you actually, in real estate, we get a lot of time off. In my early days of my career, I would complain about my time off. I'm not getting enough time off. I'm not getting enough break. And my principal would say to me, Daryl, how many houses did you sell last month? I go, none. How many did you list? Well, none. He said, you just had the whole month off. He said the problem was you spent it at work doing things that weren't productive. So that really started me thinking of, of how I was spending my time and, and if I'm going to have time off, have real time off, don't have time off that doesn't feel like time off because I'm being unproductive all the time. And that was a real wake up call for me. So what I had to do was develop an acute awareness of time. I had to be aware of every 15 minutes and what was I doing in that 15 minutes and what did I just do in that 15 minutes and what did I do in the next 15 minutes. I had to have a real awareness of time and little things like if I was going to an appointment, one second late to that appointment is 100% unacceptable. You may say to the client, hey, I'm sorry I'm running late, is that okay? They're gonna say, yeah, sure, but subconsciously they're thinking, oh, there's an agent that says something that they don't do. So it's gonna hurt you at some point. You really have to develop an awareness of time. So if 15 minutes passes, what did you do in the last 15 minutes? Like right now, think about the last half an hour. Did you do anything productive? Did you do any prospecting? Or was it all non-productive? Or was it personal? What about the hour before that? What about yesterday at the same time that you're watching this right now, assuming it's not late at night? What did you do? Were you productive in that hour? Once you have that awareness of time, 
you, you start to be able, able to manage it a little bit better. I mean, just an aside, what's all kind of interesting of being better at time management and organization, the downside of all this is when someone says, hey, we have a party Saturday night at eight o'clock, guess what time you show up? You show up just before eight o'clock and no one's there. In fact, the people are probably still setting up for the party because most of the world doesn't run on time. So if you can learn to run on time, yeah, there's an upside, but in things like parties and social events, maybe there's a downside, but that's a fair trade-off for me. And again, these are all things I've learned about time management. Here's some phrases to never ever say, and, and I'll go over them, maybe five or six of them. I can never get organized. I'll get organized when I find time. I don't know how. Daryl, Daryl, I, I have a fantastic system. Here it is. And I look at that system, I go, I don't see the system. This one I love. Organized people are boring. Not true. See, here's a true test for how organized you are. In fact, I'll give you the example of me. Um, I recently had to go in for surgery, so I was out for a couple of months. By recently, actually, it was three years ago. I had to go in for major surgery, so I was out for three months. Kim, my wife, could step in, sit at my desk, open my computer. She did not have to call me once in the first month to ask a question because everything was organized. She could just sit down and say, okay, here's his daily calls. Here's the appointments coming up. Here's the contracts that he has that he has to follow up on. Everything was organized and organized in such a way that someone else could come in, sit down and understand it. If your system isn't that, that means you have a system specific to you and you're the only one that knows how it works. That is not organization. See, one of the things Kim and I figured out very early in our career, when things in business weren't going our way, we were either not getting listings or we weren't getting sales or we were getting offers and they weren't going together or we were losing listings to newer agents or agents we thought that were were not as skilled as us. When those uh, things started happening, we found that if we could control other areas of our life that were 100% controllable, that made us feel better. And so it would make sure our house was clean, our cars were clean, the washing was done, the dishes were done, you know, the dogs were groomed. Whatever it took to organize the things that were controllable would somehow then, and I don't know how this works, but it would somehow allow the universe to say, gee, okay, now they have time for business and business would suddenly pop into our lives. Now, I don't really understand how that works. I don't need to understand. I just know that it happens that way. So understand that every area of your life is connected somehow to real estate. So if you're not getting what you want in real estate and you're disorganized in all these other areas, organize them and you'll find some reason real estate will start to work. One of the other things we did is also we identified the things that got us off track. So what gets you off track? Is it your spouse? Is it the, the kids? Is it clients that leave nasty reviews on Google and you get mad for two days about it and you get into a, uh, some sort of war with them online? So identify what gets you off track and it's okay to get off track. A schedule, a schedule is designed so you know where you get off track and where to get back on track. Very few people will keep keep their schedule 100% of the time, but the best people have a schedule all the time, and when they get off it, they know where to jump back on. That's the important key. So let me go through what we call PIN, P-I-N time, because this is critically important, you understand it, and every day should run this way, to the point that in my calendar, I keep track still today of P-I-N time. P is productive, I is indirectly productive, and N is non-productive. So P is productive. That's anything that makes you money. So if that's all you did, you'd be very happy in making money. So that's writing contracts, negotiating contracts, things that make you money. Getting listings is P time because it eventually leads to getting a contract accepted. So P time, if that's all you did, you're a happy chappy, you're making money. Then we have what's called I time. I time is indirectly productive. It's everything that leads to Productive time, so prospecting. The problem with this is if you only did I time, you'd be out of business eventually because you'd have tons and tons of leads, but you wouldn't have the appointments, you wouldn't have the listing appointments, you wouldn't have the buyer showings, and you wouldn't have the sales. So P time is most important, then I time, and end time is non-productive. End time, if your day is the majority of end time and virtually no P time or no I time, you'll be out of business very soon. It's just a matter of time. So P is productive, dollar making activities. I is indirectly productive, everything that leads to P. And N is things that have to be done 
but they don't make you any money. You know, like like um, client management, following up on your your listings or your sales that you have, and you've got to make phone calls for finance or building and pests, etc. All needs to be done, but it's non-productive, and you'll be out of business if that's all you do. So every single day, keep a track of your, your keep a track. Keep track of your P, I, and N time. Have it become part of your daily ritual. One of the other things I learned, and this is going back to, gosh, I wanna say the early, maybe mid 90s now. At one point, Kim and I had about 90 to 100 listings. 90 to 100 listings at any one point in time. So we were a high volume real estate um, couple selling real estate. So having 100 listings, having 60 to 100 listings was not unusual for us. Selling you know, five, six, seven to 30 houses a month was not unusual for us. So a high volume business. So when you have a business that big and you're the only real estate agent, this was before you know, these top real estate agents were actually small companies. Kim and I were the only ones actually selling. The other people were staff people to handle all paperwork. So what we figured out very quickly is the incoming calls were getting overwhelming. So we figured out if we can control the outgoing call, that controls the incoming call. In other words, we would be calling our listings and we would be updating them before they would have to call us to find out what's going on. Now we preface that in the listing appointment by setting up a schedule of when we would call them based on what they would require. Some clients, hey, call me once every two weeks. Some clients call me once every two days. Just depends on what the client wanted, but we would fit into their criteria we would make that outgoing call and then that would control the incoming call. In other words, that would reduce the incoming call. The other thing I, I do, which I think is, it's, it's, a genetic, um, it's a genetic trait I have, I'm stopping short of saying defect, but I have a shocking memory. I have a shocking memory. Did I just say that? Just kidding. Because I have a shocking memory, every single thing in my schedule is written down. It's put in my schedule. I leave nothing to chance. Doesn't matter how important it is or unimportant. If it's picking up the dry cleaning, that's in my schedule. So sometimes I think the reason I'm so good at time management and organization, which I am, is because I have a bad memory, so I don't depend on my memory for anything. Nothing worse, I think, than you know, waking up at two in the morning and go, oh no, I, I didn't call Bob Smith back. You don't want to be that person. And finally, I'll end it with this, the three Ds. If you haven't heard them before, every single thing that needs to be done, apply the three Ds. Do it, delegate it, or dump it. That's it. So please like, subscribe. If you have a question, pop it in the comments. I will respond to you. Hit the bell if you want to be reminded in the next video. And go out and sell something.